U.S. side only for tributary monitoring. And what I did was just put together a summary of uh, kind of where we've been, um, and hopefully you can kind of get a feel for where we're at um, with tributary mon monitoring. You know, a lot of what we did um, over the past uh, 10 years uh, was related to mining. Uh, work, so we're looking at land use change, um, and that's continuing with uh, baseline surveys across the states, and currently uh, effort looking at mercury and um, wetland uh, ditches. Um, we've also done quite a bit with uh, the estuary tributary monitoring, so looking at that uh, interaction right where the rivers enter the lakes and what's going on with that. A lot of that's happened in the St. Louis estuary, um, but and then also you saw um, Tom's talk on Schwamigan Bay, um, and monitoring-wise, we have a, a station in at the Ashland Light that's monitoring velocities, currents, temperatures. Um, so one of the things um, is that we're collecting a lot of monitoring data and a lot of continuous uh, data as well, um, which is pretty interesting. Um, we also have had uh, flood inundation um, studies uh, related to those large floods. Then um, there's been additional gauges uh, in some of the gap areas. Um, and one of them that I wanted to mention that came up earlier was uh, Lake Superior as a reference. The Isle Royal, the gauge that we have on Isle Royal on Washington Creek, that's one that has had continuous funding and it's looked upon as a reference for pretty much the entire uh, Midwest, and so we're glad to have that uh, continuing. Um, the other thing I wanted to say about the gauges, too, is we, we conducted a study on trends in um, stream flows back when we were in drought conditions, so that was like 10 years ago, and so we have the opportunity to um, look at some end members that we've had now with both droughts and then with the floods, um, low lake levels and high lake levels. Um, so then that's kind of a unique thing to have that over the period of time when we've been doing uh, CSMI. Um, and then just in general for the what's going on in the GLRI, um, great lakes levels, we have three tributary monitoring uh, stations in the, in the Lake Superior. There's also been um, some modeling of suspended sediment and nutrients. And then um, the Corps is working on a sediment budget. So some pictures uh, showing those baseline uh, studies and there's a report coming out by Perry Jones at the USGS um, for those data um, from a variety of sources. One of the things for the St. Louis um, watershed um, in the estuary, there's an EFDC model that was recently put together by uh, Richard Kiesing and others. A lot of monitoring data uh, associated with that. Uh, one of the key things happening too is we have monitoring at the Duluth entry with the core. Um, the superior entry doesn't have funding and we need to know what's going on with both of those to know what's going on with the estuary. Um, we talked about the large uh, floods and the, and the interactions. I won't say too much uh, more about that. You know, here's some of these kind of bigger regional studies that are going on. So we, we have kind of the changes, that, you know, having these um, bigger data sets uh, that we're able to work with. Um, and one of the things that we're doing for the Great Lakes Settlement Budget um, is looking at the uh, sand portion of the suspended loads. Um, and then lastly, um, just a, and what's the next steps? There's a, there's a couple of things, uh, again, with the, having the end members, um, different things going on, and, and focusing on what's happening um, across the landscape and its effects on the tributaries, um, but then also on the tributary uh, interactions. And we have opportunities with having like very dense, um, high resolution data where we can start to visualize some of these data sets um, uh, and do some geospatial analysis like on the monitoring data um, that's that uh, rich.